Hi, it's Tim Sway here, and I wanted to take a quick minute to make a video about the square, showing what it does. I have other videos about it, but there's a lot of excessive information in there, and some of it's outdated because the square has changed a little bit since the first one. So this is basically just for my, my website, which is timsway.net slash square, S-Q-W-A-Y-R-E, um, to show all the features. Now, the square is a multi-tool. It's primarily a, lay a layout and measuring tool. It does not replace this square and it does not replace this square. It's a tool you can grab instead of those sometimes, but those are still pretty important and they have differences. The main one being that they have a lip on them. I end up using this as a simple ruler for laying stuff out most of the time. That's where I find its primary value. I have it with me everywhere I go. This is so much easier than a ruler, which is bigger, or uh, you know, a tape measure, which is flimsy get really accurate measurements with this. But I find myself using this in a lot of different ways to measure. One way I, it comes in real handy is if I want to set the depth of my table saw blade for like a dado or something, uh, I can put this right on my table saw and set that blade, uh, as well as the router table. And on the CNC machine, it comes in handy for measuring your depth from the wasteboard or the, the surface. It's also great for if you want to set like on your, your table saw, crosscut sled, setting distances for you know, measuring and doing repetitive cuts, setting stop blocks and stuff. It's just a very convenient, easy way to do all of that. Also on paper and drawing and planning or sketching out cuts and stuff as well. This was laser cut with uh, the machines that it was cut on. The accuracy is to within four one thousandths of an inch. So that's pretty much accurate enough for everything I'm ever going to do. I don't know about you. Not bad. What most rulers don't have that the square has is these holes, which I have them at a quarter inch, half, three quarter, and one, as well as three eighths, five eighths, and seven eighths, and I have duplicates of them. And that's for finding lines real easy. If you say you wanted to bisect a, this piece of wood, we can put it down, line it up, and we can see that it is, we're gonna call it one inch, it's a little bit shy of one inch, and so I wanna put a line right down the middle of it. So I go to my half inch dot and make a mark, and I have another one right here. Make a mark. Now I just connect those dots. And there's my line right down the middle. Suppose I wanted to do it a different way. I could also bisect the circle. And I can see it bisected there and bisected there. So I know it's straight and I can draw my line. And there's my line. Suppose I wanted to attach adjustable feet to the bottom of a table. I want them to be three quarters of an inch away from the edge. Since I have the ruler on both sides and I have these holes marked, I can just go like this. And I can mark where each of my f screws is gonna go to hold my adjustable feet very quickly, accurately, and easily. Things like that is where I really find myself using the square. Quick markers, quick references, quick measurements, I have one always nearby, always laying on the table. Because it's flat, so it's hard to pick up, so you slide to the edge. These holes here are a protractor. I put, I did it in, in five degrees. I couldn't get every step you need. Again, it doesn't replace a protractor. It's a quick protractor for when you need one. Um, I put them in five degrees, five, 10, 15, 20. I also put 22 and a half and 31 and a half. And the way that works is you put your tip in the corner. Suppose I want to make a 22 and a half degree cut. I go to my 22 and a half degree hole. I put a little mark there and then I just spin this down and measure from the corner to the dot. Oops. And there's my 22 and a half degrees. Suppose I wanted to go beyond 45 degrees. This is my 45 degree line right here. Obviously I can put the square on that. And now I have 50, 55, 60. I also put along this top edge, some quick references. Uh, this is three quarters of an inch long. Inside here is an inch. This is a half inch here. And these are all one eighth inch intervals, which can come in handy sometimes, right from the center. Pretty cool. This ink has been baked on, so it is acetone safe. If you spill acetone, you can clean it with acetone. Besides the protractor, there's also a compass built in, and you can make circles. So each of these holes is a half inch apart, so this one would give you a one inch circle, one and a half inch circle, two inch circle, etc. All the way up to, well, I ran out of wood there, but five and a half inches apart, giving you an 11 inch, 
11 inch circle. The other thing I did is I put this rounded edge on it. If you want to sand in your corners, you have a quick reference there. It's a half inch radius. You could also, of course, use that circle feature. I can get radiuses that way as well. You can actually use this as a saw if you wanted to get something started. Don't this this tip can be used as an awl. <laughs> works better than the duress ice pick. Don't tell him I said that. It also works as a card scraper. Um, this is a card scraper I haven't seen better days. Uh, that is made of tool steel, so it has a little bit of flex, and a lot of times when you're scraping, you'll flex. You cannot flex this because it is made of stainless steel, not tool steel, and it will kink. So you don't flex it, but it comes in handy for, I find myself scraping down the MDF wasteboard of my CNC machine with it a lot, like, because you get those screw holes, um, or you can actually scrape with it for real. Also use this for quick checks, checking measurements. If you want to make a dowel, I would recommend flipping it upside down. So, because the ink will wear if it gets heated up too much from the friction of the spinning wood, if it, you could wear that ink away a little bit. So, just do it upside down. I have this piece of ebony here. I'm going to make a little tiny eighth-inch ebony dowel with it. So you can see this is tapered but I need to taper the tip just a little bit more. I don't know what's gonna happen here. I've never put anything this dense through one of these holes. Let's find out together. Chuck it in the drill. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty handy tool, and uh, those are some of the basic ideas and basic uses I had in mind when I made it. And people have been sharing their uses with it, using the hashtag square on social media, showing some different things that I never thought of that it could do. And I wonder what you can do with it. Alright, thanks for watching, and be good.